Okay, now our next increment is 126 syllables in the Greek, and it runs from verse 32 to the end of verse 35. And again, I apologize for the fact that this is in blue, because whoever designed Bible Works 9 took away a useful feature that was in the earlier versions that lets you determine the color of the highlighting. Okay? There is another mechanism for highlighting, but it's very complicated now. So, unfortunately, we're stuck with this. All right. So I'll just click since I can't do highlighting anymore. Verse 32, 35. Okay, learn a parable from the fig tree. When you see all these things, recognize he, meaning Christ, is near. And the word near is, is something I'm going to have to explain better. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass, but my words will not pass. Okay, so that's the passage, and it's 126 syllables. Now, we're familiar with the text. We've all heard this before, and we've quoted it often. What we don't know, because we don't care about Bible, so never bother to learn it in the Hebrew and Greek, is that this is metered at 126 syllables. To somebody who learned the Bible in Hebrew and Greek, like me, for example, the 126 ends up being really, really important. It jumps out at you as if it were like in bold, large font flying overhead in a blimp. 126 is a famous use of syllable counts. In Isaiah 53, Christ is talking about himself. So the syllable counts sort of act as a concordance to tell you where else in Bible to look to know what he's talking about when he says the word he says. And since he's talking about himself, and it's 126 syllables when it's sevens, then you're thinking to yourself, okay, what other Bible passages sum up at 126 syllables and are talking about either A, Christ himself, or B, the temple the temple depicts? Well, right, jumping right out at you is Isaiah 53. Because Isaiah pairs two sections of 126 syllables each to parallel the temple falling because Christ himself is, is despised. Okay? Now, I went through that in my Isaiah 53 videos in Vimeo. You can go see that if you want. The Isaiah 53 map. JPG shows you the map of the 126 so you can see how obvious it is in the Hebrew. Christ is expecting his audience to know that. So when he sums it up there at 126, that's yet one more way he's saying, Hi, I'm God, I'm Messiah, I'm the guy of Isaiah 53. And, by the way, what he's talking about is about the downfall of him, the downfall of the temple, and the generation he's talking to will not pass away until all these things take place. Now, I, I really need to stress that. See how bald it is if you know that 126 is talking about Isaiah 53 and the prophecy of the downfall of the Lord and therefore the downfall of the temple, which I spent, you know, what, about a year doing those videos back eight years ago. If you know that, then there's no ambiguity here. You know, the atheists, because they're so stupid, no offense. They say, well, but that generation passed away and all those things didn't take place. You aren't paying attention to what he's talking about because you're not paying attention to the real Bible because the real Bible is not written in English. First of all, the word this, hutas, is talking about the generation that he's talking to or a generation during which those particular things happen. It is not a hard and fast meaning of this that it has in English because it's not English. It's a demonstrative pronoun that applies to a certain group. You have to know what group. Okay, all these things take place 
Well, different kinds of things are taking place. It's a dual entendre prophecy. So the generation that's going to be subject to the tribulation, that generation won't pass away until all the tribulation stuff takes place for them. The generation of church will not pass away until all the stuff that applies to church in these passages. See, because remember, he started way up here. Okay. Actually, you start way up here. All this is starting from, from verse 1. I'm just covering the sections that are from verse 19. Alright? That's covering a whole lot of different generations. But each generation will not pass away until all, all, all these things per generation take place. And you know what he means by it because of the meter being 126 between 32 and 35 see one of the things that I've been doing now for the last eight years I had no idea this was how my life would turn out is documenting the importance of the meter to hermeneutics it is not Bible codes I am sorry that the scholars are paying no attention to this they have no excuse now. It's been out for eight years. If a brain out can do it, a scholar can do it. The scholars aren't doing it. They don't look at anything unless a fellow scholar does it. Okay, well, you know, sometimes God has a sense of humor. And he can hire even a brain out to show you how simple it is to know. And if you don't want to look and you want to be arrogant and you want to go with your degrees and your credentials and wait until a credential person presents it to you, fine, you can do that. Meanwhile, the rest of us, we're going to learn it now. And you will be the last one on board. It makes it real easy to know what the Bible means in 32 through 35 if you know the meter is 126. Because that's famous to anybody who knows Isaiah 53. If they knew the meter of it. Okay. So he's telling the generation he's talking to. Alright. Draw lessons from what I'm telling you. I have given you, as it were, the signs and wonders of tribulation, of church age, and of basically what's going to happen to him and to the temple over the next 40 years. So it's actually got three levels of application, four if you count him. His immediate death, which is going to occur in a couple of months. Two, the downfall of the temple 40 years after. Okay, three, church age, because he's already talked about, I will build church upon myself that's Matthew 16 18 epitaute te petre in my badly pronounced Greek he's, he's pounding his chest when he says that dummy he's building the church on himself not on some stupid Pope okay that's the third application fourth application the literal fulfillment of the actual words that the people are going to need to know during the time of the seven-year tribulation the official one so each generation subject to each of those things will not pass away until all the things applicable to them take place. That isn't hard to understand if you know he's using 126 as the meter. Because the meaning of the 126 in Isaiah 53 is the takedown of Messiah than the takedown of the temple. That was the, that was the prediction. That was a prophecy. It's syllable 203 in Isaiah 53, which in Hebrew starts as Isaiah 52, 13. That's the downfall of the temple. He's expecting the reader to know that. Daniel sure knew it. Daniel piggybacked on that verse in Daniel 9. And, you know, everybody knows that what the Lord is talking about here in Matthew 24 dates back to Daniel 9. I mean, hello, how did he start it? Right? See, look. When you see the abomination of desolation. Okay? Most people understand that until you get here, he's not talking about the trip. Actually, he's talking about the trends of the church age even after you get here. 
because this is really has dual entendre of 70 AD, which any Calvinist can tell you. But they refuse to recognize that all scripture, all prophecy is dual entendre. So the fact that it occurred in 70 AD wasn't the end of it. It was just one of the two expressions. And that the rapture has yet to occur. Not, not all Calvinists are stupid like that. Some of them are. The preterists are stupid. Preterism is anti-Semitic to the core. Same thing as stupid-ass Ted Cruz. They don't believe Israel has a future. Well, here's Israel's future. Okay? This, in particular, is the second advent to gather together Israel. Alright? So now he's telling you how to understand this. So this is a 126 between 32 and 35. So you know he's talking about his own crucifixion and the downfall of the temple, just as Isaiah 53 told you. Okay, so the 126 syllables here is not specifically, um, what do you want to call it? It's not specifically, hi, this is the trend, of, a trend also of the church age, but in a way it is a trend because you're supposed to learn this during your own spiritual life during church. You're supposed to learn how to recognize the signs of the times. The sign of the time is that Messiah has come and left the building. That, w that way you don't believe in the false Christ. The sign of the times is that you're, as it were, gastry. You're, you're, pregnant. you're supposed to get pregnant with him. The sign of the time is that because of the false Christ and because you're pregnant with him and because you're going to be, as it were, under pressure and under persecution, okay, then you also are going to have this issue here which I already covered in the last increment, of, of the, the people, the visible Christians, will be falling. Okay, because they're always apostate. 99% of Christianity is always apostate. That's the seed parable. Okay, and the few who grow, as, as it were, the Son of Man is appearing inside their soul as, as they're growing in Bible doctrine. Okay, and then he's gathering those who are growing to the right places, salt of the earth concept in order to preserve the world for the future okay that's the application you're learning so that's why when you see what you saw prior going from verse 19 see all this are trends of church age right here all right so that's sort of like the three big trends of the church age that he wanted you to know at that point okay so now he's saying now learn it okay and then he's, fig tree is Israel. Fig tree always stands for Israel. Okay? So when Israel is ready to put forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. Okay? In other words, summer was the time of war. Okay? Summer is when, you know, the temple's going to end up going down. It actually goes down on August 28th, 70 AD. And the, the day that the assault, the final assault by Titus started was on Passover 70 AD. Okay, they call it the 9th of Av when the temple went down. The Jews today call it that. Whether it really is the 9th of Av is kind of disputable. But that's what they call it. The first temple went down for sure on the 9th of Av. It was um, the 10th at sundown, at least. And that's in Jeremiah 52. Now, all of this is about the downfall of Christ, the downfall of the temple, as a result of which all this stuff is going to happen. So now he's taking pause and saying, learn from the signs. Learn from the signs above. Learn from the signs below. Okay? Summer is next. The word near here is angus. It means next. It means close. And it means Christ is near and next right at the door, door of your volition. In other words, grow. When you see all these things happening that you're looking at now on screen from verse 19 to the, you know, down, down about two-thirds of the screen, all that stuff's happening now. In one fashion or another, it's happening now. So Christ is right next to the door of your soul. You want proof of Bible? You want proof of God? You want proof that He's right here? You're looking at it in front of your screen right now. All those things are happening now. 
So, you, as part of the generation viewing it now, will not pass away until all these things that apply to you take place. Well, but they're always a pl taking place right now. While I talk, everything you see on screen is happening right now. We're all part of it. So heaven and earth might pass, you know, would pass away eventually, but Christ's words will not die. See, here's the word of God. It lives and abides forever. See, these are. This is like. Um, during the 126, the application of verses 32 through 35 is to remember and learn as part of the historical trend of the time. Remember, learn, be encouraged. He's right here. He's near. He's right at the door. You see the evidence, like the fig tree putting forth its leaves. Okay? And I mean, that has dual meaning now because Israel is now a political state, too. When he was talking, it was about to be taken out. And then for 19 centuries, it had no existence. But the people are all over. And, you know, we could sit there and have a whole separate argument about whether Israel should have started to form again or not. But the, the blunt fact is, is that she was trashed everywhere she went. And she was pogromized everywhere she went. So she got, she's got to have a place where she can be her own country. And wherever Israel is, we, the Christians, are supposed to defend her. And she happens to be in the Middle East again, which is not the best place to be for her own safety, but she's there. So let's defend her with our lives. That's what Christ would want us to do. And any Christian who's anti-Semitic is worse than an unbeliever. If you're anti-Semitic, you're going crazy. And God will take you out with, an, with a really horrible slow death. I've seen him do it to my own family. Okay? You can just kiss your you can just kiss your life goodbye if you're anti Semitic. Okay, you're you're mentally ill and you will get worse physically as well. Okay, so these are the lessons you take right now. In other words, the the, the value of thirty two through thirty five with a one twenty six syllable count. 126 meaning temple time from the time Isaiah wrote to the time of temple down and then when Isaiah was writing it again it was from the time of temple down to the time when the the whole chronology was restored okay that's the way Isaiah wrote it and I've already covered that in my Isaiah 53 video so you can go see those in the Vimeo the purpose of using the 126 in your own life right now is that you're part of the temple Christ is the temple the temple depicts. The temple that depicted him went down, but you're the replacement temple. The 126 is your life right now. Now 126 is, is, is two parts. 70, which is the voting, and 56, which is the testing. That's your life. Remember, four generation curse in the flood with Noah? That's your life too. Okay? So 32 through 35 ends up being like your biography. What do you learn? What do you learn from all that stuff from verse 19 and above that's actually happening in front of your life right now? Are you learning it? Are you aware of it? Do you realize, oh, this is evidence. The summer, wartime is near, but so is Christ right at the door of your volition. You're not going to pass away until all these things take place for you. Because you're part of the body. And yeah, your temple's going to go down too. But not today. Or maybe today. So while it is yet today, learn the parable of the fig tree, Israel. God's always going to be standing by Israel. God's always going to be standing by you. Because heaven and earth can pass away, but Christ's words will not. Think about it. 